Hey everyone, this is Tappers here again, and welcome to the final part of the Kirby Nightmare and Dreamland Let's Play. We are off to Rainbow Resort, level 7, and being that this is the final level, there are actually a couple of secrets in this world, along with a jump cut. Well, you kind of already seen that, but the two secrets in this uh, world are in 7-1 here. Well, not necessarily this room, and the last level, which will speak for itself, kind of, when we actually get there. But before that, okay, actually, this is where the secret is. And in order to do that, it's supposed to be a puzzle of some sort in order to, as to how you actually get the secret switch. But I end up doing something a little unexpected, except maybe not really. And it also ends up proving why I kind of like the burning power, as you will see soon enough. But, um, in order to get through a lot of these blocks, you have to slide through. And I'm being really careful. Actually, I didn't really need to because I did get a health power. But as you kind of notice, I am able to climb while doing, while using the burning power because there's really not any cooldown of using it too much. So what I do is I get rid of all the wild dews. Now I jump high and hope that I hit the uh, blocks and then I just keep spamming the attack. What you're technically supposed to do is grab the beam power up and actually hit those blocks from above, but I didn't exactly do that. Um, also, a stony just pops right there and kind of ruins my day and then there's the wild do there that just kind of ambushed me right there but we got the freeze power where enemies will have a much harder time hitting us so yeah we only have uh, one more switch left in this uh, game to hit in order to get the 100 percent and it's a pretty good 100 uh, percent reward i would say to a degree um but now we have silence Stunning silence and what is actually a boss rush as we fight uh, Bizarro bonkers, but um, and he's actually kicking our butts because he's Being kind of a jerk, but now we get his power So I would say this is probably a good time for me to like talk about some things as fan fan almost tries to preempt us and we are now down to one Oh yeah, I actually did die here. For some reason I was thinking I didn't, but then I noticed something was off, so... Yeah, it just puts us outside, and then we get to fight. Not a very pleasing color palette of him. And he just jumps on us before I even get a chance to unleash anything on him. Yeah, I can't say I like Fan Fan's revenge. But I do like Fan Fee and Don Fan, because... They're pretty cool, I would say. Um, okay, what was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah. Um, the next game I'm going to be doing is probably Superstar, or I might consider Kirby's Dream Land 3. Actually, I don't even know if that was what I was going to talk about. I will eventually remember. Um, but aside from when we go through this four-part four boss uh, mega rush, except it's not even a mega rush. Also, we're using throw against a backdrop boss. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I'd never mentioned that uh, throw has the blue headband while backdrop has red. It's imitating Street Fighter, guys. No, it's, it's really not. But eventually later games will imitate Street Fighter in a way with fighter kirby which we haven't even gotten yet um oh god I, I can't even remember what i was going to talk about but it was something of some interesting notes but also the last uh nightmare boss we fight is uh fire lion which is still not exactly hard except it's a little faster and a little more aggressive but its attacks mostly consist of just hobbling forward and then stomping for stars. Because that's kind of how it works. Also, random stomp there. That does absolutely nothing. And 
I was almost afraid I was going to die because I think on one attempt I had almost no health and when you complete uh, the boss rush you actually get five one-ups and I just wasted a bunch of time but and then actually the music returns once we get to the sky and hit the warp star because we're going to be fighting KD, King DDD next because we fly up and into the distance which this background kind of reminds me of what we'll see in kind of Kirby 64. Oh yeah, that's a game that I most definitely will be Let's Playing at some point. Though, I intend to sort of go in order, otherwise some continuity kind of gets a little messed up, except not really at all. But, um... Now, you're probably wondering why I'm going back in. Well, you notice that the boss is a little different. We're fighting uh, Poppy Bros. Jr. Because we actually went through the not-secret area of some relevance. As we can just stand here and do nothing, and he just hops over us. And eventually attacks us. But, um, when we do get 100%, we do get a couple of interesting modes. Now, for the purpose of this Let's Play, I'm probably not going to do those for a while. I might do them in some capacity. Um, one of them's a boss rush, and the other one's an interesting game mode that's of some relevance. But, oh yeah, I, I remember what I was going to mention. Um, when we fought Meta Knight, you probably would be wondering, like, what... What is he trying to achieve by having Kirby's minions uh, fight him or whatever? Um, I think it's implied that, um, and this is actually seen by, okay, I'll spoil it. The 100% uh, gift that you receive, gift that you receive, that's not an oxymoron at all. But um, what you end up getting from 100%, you also get something called Meta Nightmare. Which, um, it's a game mode where you actually play as Meta Knight. And by doing that, you can fight some unique bosses and gameplay. And it's a difficulty mode of interest because you don't get as much health. And it's sort of like a time attack almost. And you have to play it in one setting. Also, this is the real Fan Fan. And he looks at least better than the puke green that we saw earlier. And he's not aggressive by doing rollout. I mean, it seriously is a fan fee because it uses rollout and defense curl and stomp. I don't even think that's an actual move from a fan fee, but it doesn't really matter because, yeah. But now I, I mentioned that um, Meta Knight is trying to find a worthy adversary, and I want to say this kind of plays into the plot of one of the sub games in uh, Kirby Superstar. I mean, it's only a guess. I mean, when I very, I played it for the first time, I didn't really know. Also, he's using a uh, hover ability, which I don't think we actually saw Bugsy do at all. So that's unique, I guess. And for some reason he's not charging, but I don't think, oh, actually I didn't kill him because, oh, and he pile drives me because I was being kind of stupid but fortunately there's only one boss left and it's fire lion again except less uh aggressive if you can even call it that because he still does the same stuff i think it's still a question of whether or not i'm going to um do live commentary of a uh, superstar of course it's still a question of the order whether it's superstar and then kirby's dreamland 3 or vice versa but i would definitely say that uh soup or i'm sorry uh 64 the crystal shards will be after one of those two but hopefully by then i won't get all kirbyed out or curbed out uh, that's not even a funny joke but that's the end of the boss rush and there's actually nothing at the end of it because um it wasn't a secret so we just actually head back to where we were and I should kind of end the level by going through the select but instead I risk getting hit by the sword or blade knight but I didn't have to worry about that so I got his power and we fall almost to the top 
I kind of wish it still had the Dreamland 2 stuff where you could get health and stars, but actually that doesn't really matter. I could use a rest right now, and I almost actually died from touching it because the sword has some funky range depending on how you hit him. Like, the sword extends pretty far if you do just a regular slash. Otherwise, it, the spin slash does not as good range, and, well, it doesn't help when you have Bronald Burtz chasing you to the ends of the world. But, yeah, this is kind of a cruel area, especially when you have... Uh, Brown Burts that will just kind of appear right there, and they will chase you to some degree. Fortunately, they sometimes bugger off after a while, and hopefully I don't get hit by Broom Hair. I could have just slid into it because it's a much better option. But then we still have the kind of the horribly placed Brown Burts and all that, but fortunately they give us the invisibility candy that we don't have to worry about. So, there is that. Also, a block that's covering up a 1-up, so there's that. This is also an area where if you're quick enough, you can get through there without the Shotso's opening fire on Kirby Season. Except that didn't exactly make any sense, but it's now UFO Season, so find out, find your mysterious sign by cutting a hedge maze and luring the UFOs to do your bidding and all that. Also, we got one more uh, chance at the ball power, which is actually kind of useful getting through here because you have a lot of room to hit, and um, unfortunately, I didn't get through it flawlessly, but it really doesn't matter because um, we will use it here because, well, I think it's actually the last time we see it. And... I enjoyed Ball for what it was. It's not the worst power-up ever. I refuse to say it is, and those pigs are still annoying. I should have some bacon, except it's not exactly good for you. And I have to eat healthier because, well, being healthy. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that segment, but it kind of doesn't matter as we get through these uh, four-corner quadrant rooms of burning intrigue except not really I'm gonna let that one live because he's not being a jerk and we also have an area where I should play this a lot better by just sliding and paying more attention but I kind of didn't so instead I'm going to almost get myself killed but then actually wait did I die on this part actually no i didn't i think it's this next screen because it pulls a nasty trick it's gonna th have you explode a thing you don't have much room to work with you have uh peeps or i'm sorry marshmallow peeps trying to go after you and once again the bomb explodes way before i can actually grab it also one up not worth it at all because you have nothing to work with well actually no you just need to get rid of the bombs and then just slide under easily somehow I managed to get that peep in my mouth or no I, I'm just gonna stop talking but let's ride the currents up here and we only have two stages normal stages left and this could be maybe maybe not the last time we actually hit number one and the one up 44 lives We've got matching double digit digits almost at the half century mark. But here we could use a crash power up as we get through this gauntlet here, which has a lot of lag and just explodes on us. But fortunately, we will still grab it in time as we go to the next screen. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention Grand Wheelie was not one of the mini bosses we had to fight in the tower for some really weird reason and there's also some mini wheelies at the bottom which I find really strange they would have this boss here especially since you don't want to be using wheelie in this part which I should just ditch the ability as a whole and instead grab uh, the burning power except I don't feel like grabbing it for some reason even though it is 
kind of useful there. Instead, I'm waiting to uh, get to a very interesting and annoying secret. In order to get this one, we need the burning power instead of the laser or the fire. In order to get this one, park yourself right under this ledge and spam the uh, attack button so that you kind of hop yourself up. But you need to have really good timing. And it's a little difficult because, um, yeah, that can kind of happen where you just kind of um, get out of here. I don't care about your kind laser because it's not all that useful i mean it's useful maybe if it were like a combined power up or if it was gunstar heroes or gunstar kirby no not even but in with luck i eventually get there i take an awkward turn and guess what you get five lives near the end of the game i'm almost at the half century mark of interest and yeah that's just the end of the stage right there we have one stage left, and it's a very interesting case. What I what I ended up doing was I ditched my power up because it holds some significant meaning. Going through these doors, it's none other than Green Greens. No, it's uh, Kirby's Dreamland One, which is pretty much a nice throwback considering this is a remake of Adventure. But then again, Adventure kind of first of dreamland but whatever but the weird thing about this is while everything is in black and white kirby and the enemies are in color so i mean it kind of ruins the mood almost in a way but i mean the remix of green greens is nice also after every few screens we actually get uh, a new level so we only go through a, a few screens of each. I'm pretty sure we skipped some of them, but it, it kind of doesn't matter. And we're also going to grab that one up and make it even 50, because why the heck not? Now, I'm not sure if every game kind of does the throwback to the original Dreamland, but um, it does still have some of the annoying aspects, like the exploding coconuts and this coconut here for whatever reason i should grab that yeah i actually do and for whatever reason that kabo just respawned even though he was way off screen also the gordo doesn't kill you in one hit or does massive damage like he did before because you're actually using unit bars well actually it was using unit bars before but that's besides the point bubbly clouds so also i don't remember uh, Scarfy's ambushing like that. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with anything like that, as we're actually drawing to the end of the stage, and I mentioned before that there is a secret here. However, um, and I don't remember if I showed this in the original Dreamland, or, yeah, you kind of would think it's right there because the pillars look a little odd. Um, the secret is actually up there. Not through the door, but rather the moon. Yes, we entered uh, Mr. Bright's lair, except not really. And yeah, that's actually the final secret of the game. So the only thing we have left is to fight the final boss. As mentioned, it is another, none other than King Deity, because he's a jerk for splitting the Star Rod into pieces. So there's that. But first, I need to take a refreshing pause, which, well, this is post-commentary, so it's kind of meaningless for me to say that. And Kirby was taking a nap, but he's definitely ready for this, and we're going to fight without power-ups because, well, it's only fair when fighting King DD in the Fountain of Dreams. But yeah, King DD he is pretty slow, but he has a lot more animations than he did in the original. And that's a heck of a swing, and that's a heck of a hammer which is pretty powerful and it has stars on it. And also a really interesting remix of uh, uh, King Deity's theme. I also didn't mention that uh, the music that was used for 7-2, um, where we had the boss rush, it's um, a remix of uh, King Deity's theme. And we also get an interesting uh, move that King Deity decides to use. He puffs himself up 
just like a balloon. And this crazy call. No, I, I, I need to stop singing the DK rap because I did that in Battle Network 2 and it wasn't exactly funny or amusing, but it kind of was. And uh, he kind of trapped me right there, so that kind of sucked. Um, I guess while we're watching the finish of this boss eventually, I should mention something that I probably didn't point out before. Um, each of the levels of the game... Uh, if you take the letters, because each one kind of like, you know, like Rainbow Resort, Orange Ocean, Yogurt Yard. If you spell out the first letters from each of the levels, it spells, well, when you start with Vegetable Valley first, it spells Roy G. Biv backwards. It's kind of clever in a way, and it does that for a lot of games, um... Well, okay, maybe not a lot of games, but it does it for some of the games in this series. It does that for Return to Dreamland, and I want to say possibly Triple Deluxe. I don't know if it does that for uh, Robobot, but that's kind of besides the point. Also, I found out today that Robobot actually had a GDQ run, except I haven't watched it because... Speedrunning has kind of died down for me as far as interest level, but actually I lied. This is the final level here. Level 8, the Fountain of Dreams. Because, well, it's the Boulevard of Broken Dreams because we can't dream because King DD is a jerk. So we're going to teach him a lesson by swatting him away and planting a star rod back in its place. But wouldn't you know it, everything turns dark and gritty because, oh no, it's dark star matter. Except it's dark matter. So how are we going to fight him off? Because he was the actual culprit of the game. Well, King DD is going to suck us up and send us to the moon. As we fight dark matter. Which, um... Now, you remember in Dreamland 2 we fought with the uh, star sword. Or the dream sword, whatever you want to call it. And we just shot stars. Well, actually we're shooting stars this time. As we are actually on a time limit to defeat this boss. Which, it's really freaking stupid as far as I'm concerned. If you don't defeat this boss in time, you will die automatically. Because apparently you die by auto-scrolling. Which makes no sense since you're in the air. But fortunately we don't have to worry about that. Don't know if it actually still scrolls after you defeat him. But yeah, that's the end of Dark Matter. Except it isn't really because he retreats to the moon. Where we actually fight the real final boss. Which is actually Dark Matter something or other that I don't remember. But it's kind of weird with this boss. Because whenever I look at him, he just looks kind of like an old geezer. I mean, look at him. He's got kind of like the old man chin and has like a, some sort of samurai helmet. Not sure why. But the actual final... Yeah, well, actually, the final boss is called Nightmare instead of actually Dark Matter. I'm actually talking out of my ass on this one. But yeah, this is the actual final boss. And in order to fight him, you actually have to hit stars at him when his uh, cloak opens up. He's basically Rupakante from Final Fantasy 4 or 2, depending on where you're from. But one of the things that kind of bothered me with this boss was that I wasn't really sure how to hit him. Because, I mean, you notice that you can't actually float. Instead, you do this circular air motion with the star rod, and you can't really hurt him that way. You actually have to shoot stars in him. In him at him but you kind of get what i'm saying because this is the final battle with nightmare except it's not even a final battle and he kind of just explodes into kind of like a horror horror fashion he shoots laser beams from his eyes and makes a creepy faded eye uh glowing show whatever and the moon explodes and Congratulations, you get 100% complete, and we haven't even gotten to the credits yet, which is kind of odd. Speaking of odd, oh no, we just created Mega Lunatone, and it's going to come after us for doing damage to itself. Because it can no longer levitate. No, that's not even true. 
Our hero Kirby has fought bravely to recover the Star Rod, but King DD didn't mean any harm. Why is that? Well, he wasn't trying to harm the Fountain of Dreams. It was actually to protect it by taking the Star Rod because he knew it had nightmares appearing in the fountain. How he knew, I don't exactly know. So he tried to keep the pieces away from Kirby so that it was kept in check because, well, power source and all. But we don't have to worry because we've made amends as the nightmare is no longer here and there's no longer any nightmare in dreamland i'm terrible for saying that but it's kind of the easy way out of saying that joke but fluff up your pillow and get good night's sleep i could use a good night's sleep it's just a shame i have my back acting up which is why i can't do things and it's a perfect 10.0 throw to reenact the Fountain of Dreams before it eventually heads to uh, Smash Melee. Which, I want to say this game came out after after Melee or maybe before. But yeah, that was uh, Nightmare in Dreamland, as I have another cutout of uh, my headset. And of course this game is made by Sakurai and uh, director being Shimomura as we watch these highlights of pro players and a highlight of needle which i never got to show off and it's a really cool sprite because it protects you and you get to keep holding the power i i, I love the spiked helmet and the yellow color palette it's just a shame that i was being stupid and thinking that i got the power except i didn't get a power because i thought it gave no power and that totally made sense also, I didn't mention the uh, stars that you get from fighting um, Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright will either give you the fire power or it'll give you the uh, cutter power. It doesn't give you spark, but yeah. Also, one thing, I kind of wish I used the uh, high jump power more that you get from here because it's actually not bad because a lot of the... In later games, you will have abilities that do more than one action. So it's kind of weird in that regard that I don't use other power-ups against them. Or in later games, power-ups don't work as well because the aerial attack doesn't really do all that good. Also, I think I got it backwards. The red missile gives you the sleep, while I think the gold gives you the hammer ability doesn't matter i still don't like heavy mole anyway fortunately there's a better heavy uh boss we'll see later in the games or game i should say but yeah also if you want to challenge use backdrop against uh some of the bosses all you need to do is pick up a star and then just iframe abuse right through them and yeah that's kind of how it works but yeah that's been uh kirby's dreamland or i'm sorry nightmare in dreamland and as i mentioned uh yeah we get the boss endurance sub game but we also get meta nightmare although that might be after boss endurance i don't really remember because i haven't done the boss endurance in a long time so i'm also going to show off yes we got 100 percent hero of lore i guess that's a title that we get of some relevance but yeah, so until next time, this has been Tapris, and I'll see you next time. Take care.